Good morning, everybody. I'm so happy that you clicked on this video to join us for this morning's Youth Sunday School or Sunday Morning Devotional. Let's go! So I really wanted to kick this off with a um, a switch. Well, not really a switch. What did I want to say? Oh, what? So I really wanted to kick this off with um, uh, oh, I just need to wake up. Oh, where's my cup? Oh, let's pray. If you'd bow with me. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity that we've had to just embrace ourselves with you. I pray and I thank you so much that you are open to our uh, feelings. You're open to what we have to say and how we need to just express ourselves because of what's happening right now. And I thank you so much for the comfort that you provide. Thank you. We love you. Amen. So today I wanted to discuss Job. I know that that's kind of a weird subject. And here's why I say that it's weird, because it's a very um, interesting book of the Bible, Job. If you've ever read Job, then I'd be shocked if you did not have at least a handful of questions afterwards, because a lot happens and it's pretty uh, out there. Um, but what I wanted to discuss was actually in the end of the book of Job, and it's his reaction and his conversation that he has with God. And I think that's something that we really need to have more and more, especially today. This is Job 7, chapter 7, verses 1 through 21. And I'm going to be reading this from the message version. And I'll try to read this nice and slow, and you can follow along on the screen. Uh, in my Bible, it's titled, There's Nothing to My Life. Oh, and a side note, um, this is all coming right after he has lost his children, he's lost his home, and he is um, constantly being um, pushed by his friends and his wife to, um, to apologize to God, because surely if this is happening to him, then he's done something wrong. But he is a faithful man, and he knows that he didn't, so this is actually his response. Uh, 1 through 21. Human life is a struggle, isn't it? It's a life sentence to hard labor. Like field hands longing for quitting time and working stiffs with nothing to hope for but payday, I'm given a life that me meanders and goes nowhere. <clears throat> Months of aimlessness, nights of misery, I go to bed and think how long till I can get up. I toss and turn as the night drags on and I'm fed up. I'm covered with maggots and scabs. My skin gets scaly and hard, then oozes with pus. My days come and go swifter than the click of a knitting needle. Uh, let me stop there really quick. I wanted to point out actually that one of the other things that he has in all of this time of uh, great sadness for him, really losing all of that stuff in his family, he also is covered from head to toe with like boils and you know, painful things. That's why it says my skin gets scaly and hard, then it oozes with pus. So that explains that. Um, okay, uh, and then the yarn runs out, an unfinished life. God, don't forget that I'm only a puff of air. These eyes have had their last look at goodness, and your eyes have seen the last of me. Even while you're looking, there'll be nothing left to look at. When a cloud evaporates, it's gone for good. Those who go to the grave never come back. They don't return to their to visit their families. Never again will friends drop in for coffee. And so I'm not keeping one bit of this quiet. I'm laying it all out on the table. My complaining to high heaven is bitter but honest. Are you going to put a, mu a muzzle on me? The way you quiet the sea and still the storm? If I say I'm going to bed, then I'll feel better. A little nap will lift my spirits. 
You come and so scare me with nightmares and frighten me with ghosts that I'd rather strangle in the bedclothes than face this kind of life any longer. I hate this life. Who needs any more of this? Let me alone. There's nothing to my life. It's nothing but smoke. What are mortals anyway that you bother with them, that you even give them the time of day, that you check up on them every morning, looking in on them to see how they're doing? Let up on me, will you? Can't you even let me spit in the peace? Even suppose I'd sinned. How would that hurt you? You're responsible for every human being. Don't you have better things to do than pick on me? Why make a federal case out of me? Why don't you just forgive my sins and start me off with a clean slate? The way things are going, I'll soon be dead. You'll look high and low, but I won't be around. He got real. Those are real words. Those are obviously real emotions. And he let it all out there. <sighs> Here's the thing. When I have something that's bothering me, and I don't want to say that, that I'm speaking for men right now, but I know that typically this is a guy thing to do. Um, but it's the guy thing to hold things in, to not express their feelings. And then we all know it, we've seen it, stuff bottles up and then later it comes out pretty aggressively and pretty messy. Um, and I'm not saying that that's what happened here with Job. Actually, I think that this was appropriate for what was happening in his life. Um, and let me explain what I mean by that. He was being honest in his prayer to God. He was expressing how he felt openly to what he saw the situation as, as he saw it and as he was living it. Um, and I think that that in itself is a very important thing to do. There are plenty of people that will say that you need to get something off your chest. You probably heard your parents say it. You've probably heard plenty of other adults say it. You might have even heard it on uh, social media or on TV in general. You should get it off of your chest. Just saying the words is a big relief because you've said it, you've expressed it. Um, and this is exactly what Job is doing. And I think more importantly, this is exactly what we should be doing. Now again, as a guy, this is already something that I don't do very often anyways. And for some of you girls, there might be some of you that are the same way there might be some of you guys that are the complete opposite and you will express everything that you feel and think and there's something beautiful about that because uh, you know we always know what's on your mind so we can always uh, know how to handle it and that's the thing that's the key right there if you never express it then you might not even know that that's what you're dealing with because you've buried it so deep we're all going through something that is so unique and different that if we don't express it then we're not dealing with it then we're just putting it down into our deep deep dark corner inside of us somewhere and that's not a good thing so talk to your parents talk to your siblings talk to your friends and especially talk to God whatever those feelings are express them to God. So after that, know that first, God can handle it. Even if you're expressing anger like Job did, he can handle it. Trust me, he can take whatever words you want to throw at him. But if you don't say anything, then nothing will get done, nothing will be better, and you definitely won't feel better about any of it. I think that having God as a sounding board is probably one of the best things ever. If you can open up to that relationship first, first off, now you're actually accepting that there's a relationship there. So that's really important. Another scripture that I wanted to bring up is uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verses 26 this is out of NIV it says in your anger do not sin do not let the Sun go down while you are still angry 
Second part, don't let the sun go down. That's very clear. And in that little sentence, I take that as you got to deal with it. Don't hold it in. Deal with it. Have the conversation. In the first part, it says, in your anger, do not sin. I think that you can express yourself and how you feel about situations and not sin when you're expressing yourself. And that's something that you have to think very clearly whenever you talk about it, but it's still very important to talk about it. So here's a truth that I've learned over the years and really taken to heart um, in how I choose who I hang out with and how I choose who I spend time with. Um, and that is the people that I choose to put in my life are in my life because when I'm around them, uh, it brings me joy. When I communicate with them, I usually end the conversation and leave the conversation feeling better uh, about myself, about life. Uh, I have a, you know, kind of a, a perk or whatever you call it in my step. Um, oh, what's the word? A, a skip? I'm happier, okay? That's all it is to it. I'm happier. Um, it's the same thing that you would get after leaving uh, a movie that you really enjoyed. You leave afterwards feeling um, inspired, feeling excited, feeling passionate. Um, it's the same feeling that I get when I go to Disney World. It's the same feeling that I have when I see all of you. It's the same feeling I have after our Zoom meetings. It's the same feeling I have being at church. And it's the same feeling I have having a conversation with God. If you really put yourself out there and have a true and honest, open conversation regularly with Jesus Christ, with God, with the Holy Spirit, with whoever you want to call him, baby Jesus, whatever it is. I promise you, if you do that on the regular, you will come out of it a better person, a happier person, a more positive person, a more loving person. I say it all the time. The more you spend time with, the more you become like. So one thing in knowing uh, Job's story, um, you'll have to read it to know, but knowing that he openly um, expressed his feelings. That's the main thing that I want to focus on because when we do that, when we get something like that off of our chest, then we could take a step in a direction. And that step in whatever direction it is is also your choice. I hope that you decide to have your discussion with God and in doing so, you'll continue to walk toward Him. Now more than ever, have the discussion and let it be with God. Can't wait to see you guys later today, one o'clock for JHO. 2 o'clock for HSO, and we'll see you next time.